Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel, Chemical Adda. In today's video, we are going to understand one of the important topic in chemical reaction engineering, which is the integrated rate equation for a second order reaction in a variable volume batch reactor. Hence, before we proceed with the derivation, it is essential to first understand what a second order reaction is. So, a reaction is known as second order when the rate of reaction is directly proportional to the square of the concentration of a single reactant or proportional to the product of the concentrations of two different reactants each raised to the power of one. So as we know, second order reactions often occur in bimolecular reactions where two molecules collide to react. Hence there are two cases where the reaction order is two. Case one is a second order reaction where two molecules of a reactant react to produce a product. So, here in this reaction, two molecules of same reactant involves. Hence, we can write the rate of disappearance of reactant A as minus Ra is equal to Kca square. This means that the rate of disappearance of reactant A or rate of reaction is proportional to the square of its concentration. Then the case 2 is a second order reaction where A plus B gives products. So, in this case, the reaction involves two different reactants like A and B and the rate of disappearance of reactant A or rate law depends on the initial concentrations of A and B. So on the basis of this, again there are two cases. Case A is if the initial concentration of the both the reactant A and B is equal. That means, if Ca0 is equal to Cb0, then the rate of disappearance of reactant A can be written as minus Ra is equal to Kca square. This behaves just like case 1, where only one reactant is involved. Now case B is, if the initial concentration of the both the reactant A and B is not equal, that means, if Ca0 is not equal to Cb0, then, the rate of disappearance of reactant A can be written as minus Ra is equal to Kca into Cb. This means that the reaction rate is proportional to the product of the concentrations of both reactants. Hence, in short we can say that, there are three cases for second order reaction, and for each case we should derive integrated rate equation. But, in today's video, we will focus on deriving the integrated rate equation for a second order reaction, in a variable volume batch reactor. For that we will consider only the first case, where reaction is, 2A gives products. And if you want to see, the detailed derivation of the integrated rate equations for all three cases, like case 1, and for both the cases of case 2, in a constant volume batch reactor, I have already uploaded separate videos on that. Please check them out, or click the link in the description. Now, let's go step by step and derive the equation. So step 1 is, writing the rate equation. For that, let's consider the second order reaction. 2A gives products. So, as we already know, the rate of disappearance of A. Minus Ra is equal to, minus, 1 by V, dNA by dt, is equal to, Kca square. Now, to derive the integrated rate equation for a second order reaction in variable volume batch reactor, we first need to express equation number 1 in terms of conversion, and then we can integrate the equation to get the final form. Now let's move on step 2 which is, converting V, DNA by DT, and CA in terms of conversion. So as we know, in a variable volume batch reactor, the reactor volume changes during the course of the reaction. Hence, the volume of the reaction system varies linearly with the conversion. So, for variable volume batch reaction, V can be written as V is equal to V0 into 1 plus epsilon AXA where V0 is the initial volume. Epsilon A is the fractional change in volume of the reaction system between no conversion and complete conversion of reactant A. Now, let's see about DNA by DT. So as we know, the number of moles of reactant A at any time t is given by Na is equal to Na0 into 1 minus Xa where Xa is the conversion of reactant A at time t. 
and Na0 is the initial moles of A. Now, differentiating this equation with respect to T, we get dNA by dT is equal to minus Na0 dXA by dT. Now next, let's see about Ca. So, as we know that the concentration of reactant A at any time T as Ca is equal to Na by V. So, to convert Ca in terms of conversion, let's put the value of Na and V. Hence, after rearranging the term, we get concentration in terms of conversion as Ca is equal to Ca0 into 1 minus Xa divided by 1 plus epsilon AXA. So, in this way, we get the value of V, DNA by DT, and CA in terms of conversion, XA. Now let's move on, step 3. Where we substitute the value of V, DNA by DT, and CA into the rate equation that is in the equation 1. So, now let's put the value of V from equation 2, DNA by DT from equation 3, and C from equation 4 in equation 1. Hence equation 1 becomes. So we can see that there are two minus sign on the left hand side of the equation which can be cancelled because a minus multiplied by a minus gives a plus. And we can write CA0 in the place of NA0 by V0. After rearranging the term we get. Hence after simplifying the equation we get. DXA by DT is equal to KCA0 into 1 minus XA square divided by. 1 plus epsilon AXA. Hence, equation 5 is the simplified form of equation 1 in terms of conversion. Now, let's move on step 4, which is integrating the equation. So let's integrate the equation within the limit. At t is equal to 0, XA is equal to 0. And at t is equal to t, XA is equal to XA. So, to integrate the equation, first let's rearrange the term of equation 5. After this, we get. Now, after applying integration, we get. But, before applying the integration formula, let's separate the numerator of the left-hand side of the equation. Hence, we get. Next, to apply the integration formula, let 1 minus xA is equal to y. Hence we get xA will be 1 minus y. Then, after differentiating both sides, we get dxA is equal to minus dy. Now, let's find out the value of new limit. So as we have, at t is equal to 0, xA is equal to 0. So we get y is equal to 1. Similarly, we have, at t is equal to t, xa is equal to xa. So we get y is equal to 1 minus xa. Now, let's integrate the equation within the new limit as, at t is equal to 0, y is equal to 1. And at t is equal to t, y is equal to 1 minus xa. So we get, now let's separate the numerator of second term in the left hand side of equation. After rearranging the term, we get. After applying the integration formula, we get. After applying the limits, we get. After solving the equation, we get. After rearranging the term, we get. Finally, after rearranging the terms, we get the final equation as. XA into 1 plus epsilon A divided by 1 minus XA plus epsilon A ln of 1 minus XA is equal to KCA0T. So, this is the integrated rate equation for second order reaction for variable volume batch reactor. Now, let's conclude this topic. So, for second order reaction in variable volume batch reactor, 2 a gives products. We get integrated rate equation as xA into 1 plus epsilon A divided by 1 minus xA plus epsilon A ln of 1 minus xA is equal to KCA0T.
From this equation, we can conclude that if we plot the graph of x a into 1 plus epsilon a divided by 1 minus x a plus epsilon a ln of 1 minus x a versus t, we will get a straight line with slope is equal to kc a 0. That's all for today's video. I hope you found this explanation of the integrated rate equation for a second order reaction in a variable volume batch reactor helpful. If you haven't watched the previous video on the integrated rate equation for a zero order and first order reaction in a variable volume batch reactor, make sure to check it out for a better understanding. You'll find the link to that video in the description box below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more chemical engineering content. And also, feel free to comment below for more content suggestions. Stay tuned for more amazing topics and I'll see you in the next video.